uh, event last year, and uh, we have been fun gals ever since, uh, spreading the love of mushrooms, and uh, yeah, that's where I come from. Yeah, I'm Barb Smith, and uh, I love these folks here. We did meet last year at the festival out in the Quinault Rainforest, been out there for the last three years sharing the beauty of the rainforest and the fun in the fungi world. And, and Dr. Shroom, <laughs> I'm very interested to hear your story. Thank you, yeah, my name is Duncan Polk. I'm a local here in Ocean Shores, Washington. About six years ago, I started getting into mushrooms and um, a year before that, I was experiencing some rough times in life and it, it caused me to question some things about life and do some soul searching. And ultimately I found myself in the forest on the forest floor meditating. And I came out of meditation and the first thing I saw was mushrooms. And that just kind of propelled this whole Dr. Schumer's thing. And it's a wellness company that teaches anyone and everyone, kids, women, children, about all things mushrooms, cultivation, um, like Barb said, micro dosing, mm -hmm. uh, the benefits of just mushrooms in general. Well, uh, mushrooms have kind of, um, you know, they've always been here, of course, but mm -hmm. many people are starting to have additional interest in mushrooms because they are so prevalent. They are also dangerous. Many people think mushrooms are more poisonous than edible. Uh, sure. They're dangerous for animals. Um, last night I was walking a dog for the kennel and we came across a big mushroom and immediately the dog wanted to eat it. Mm -hmm. And we had to say, no, 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 that's not a treat for you. But we want to talk about the benefits of mushrooms because um, as people are discovering, there are chemicals within mushrooms that can extend your life, improve your memory, as well as help with issues like depression. So give us a little bit more information in that regard. Yeah, so uh, there are... Like you, just like you said, so many different types of different species of mushrooms. Um, one that one particular species that I think has been really focused on lately, uh, like you were saying, Corinne, is uh, medicinal mushrooms. So the first mu mushroom that comes to my mind is lion's mane. Uh, lion's mane is a culinary mushroom, and not only is it a culinary mushroom, but it's also a medicinal mushroom. So it holds medicinal properties. Uh, it's really good for cognitive function. It's good for uh, energy, it's good for uh, mental clarity, it's good for a lot of things. And um, from the scientific research that has been done in the past and has been currently um, ongoing, uh, yeah, studies show that it's, it's, it's been extremely medicinal. And it's also a mushroom that's been used for centuries in other cultures. Correct. So, uh, mm -hmm. It's available now. You can get it in little capsules and what have you. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that people listening today mm -hmm. don't think that you guys just go out and crawl around. <laughs> <laughs> Although you yeah. did bring me a giant bucket of beautiful mm. lobster mushrooms. Can that's you tell right. us a little bit more about what those are? Sure. Um, the lobster mushroom is one of my most favorite mushrooms to find. You usually find them late August um, through October. Um, they love to be out in the woods with um, our hemlock forests here, and our moisture is just perfect for them. Um, and uh, lobsters are an interesting mushroom because they're actually two fungi in one. Um, they're actually a short stem brucella, which is a white mushroom that you find in the woods um, that then gets infected um, by this parasitic Ascomyocyte um, fungus that infects it, which then turns it this bright orange, like forest. Uh, hunting orange. You, you can't miss it. You can't mistake it for anything else. Um, and it's called a Hypomyces lactiflorum is its official um, Latin name. Um, and it's great. You can uh, chop it up, uh, saute it in a pan, add a little curry and butter, and it's the most fantastic mushroom to eat. Well, all of you have a great deal of knowledge. How did you acquire this knowledge? Um, I, for one, uh, joined a mushroom club. Oh. Um, I joined the South Sound Mushroom Club in Olympia uh, back about 12, 13 years ago, and I became the president of that mushroom club, was the president for two years, was a vice president, um, led forays, um, became very involved in the um, mushroom community. Um, and then when I moved here into Ocean Shores, everybody knew I liked mushrooms and liked to forage mushrooms, and they're like, oh, take me out. I want to go out. So I was like, let's form a club here in Ocean Shores. So 
Um, I came up with the idea of Shores and Spores, sound like a great <laughs> name. So um, we actually got the first community group together at the library um, and uh, had everybody vote on a name for the club. And we all voted that Coastal Shores and Spores Mycological Society was the name of our club. Short For short, we call it Shores and Spores. Um, and we created a Facebook page for it, Shores and Spores. And, and you know, we just have a lot of fun. It's a great way to educate yourself about mushrooms. Um, because the first time you go out, what do you look for? I didn't know what to look for. I only knew morels. I didn't know any other mushrooms. Um, so the club actually taught me one at a time what each of the edible mushrooms were. And then learning a lot of the other mushrooms, the other little mushrooms that you find. And I'm fascinated by all the like little um, mushrooms and all the qualities that they have. and. Um, got involved in a group where we actually sent mushrooms into like Duke University um, for DNA sampling. Um, and that's something that we're going to do this Sunday is we're going to actually collect some mushrooms uh, through uh, our mushroom club's uh, picnic. And we're going to collect mushrooms and then send them in for DNA sampling to compare them for the same kinds of mushrooms around the world. Are they the same or are they different? And so they've been doing a lot of renaming of mushrooms because of the DNA sampling. And it's quite fascinating to to see it. So now I, I do want to make sure that we give a little um, information about anyone who's interested in being a part of your club. How do they reach out to you and get more information? When does it meet again? Uh, it will meet again in September. Uh, I believe it's sept Tuesday, September fifteenth, at the library, six p.m. Okay. And uh, the way that people can get a hold of us is through our website at shoresandspores.com, or they can reach out through a our Facebook page, um, Shores and Spores, um, or our other Facebook page, um, which is Coastal Shores and Spores Mycological or Society. So mm -hmm. uh, we have an active group of mushroom people here, and um, it sounds like there are kind of different areas of interest, but you kind of cover them all. The idea of the medicinal, mm -hmm. the therapeutic mushroom, the uh, culinary mushroom, and it sounds like also doing mushroom research, which is really interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Um, so now as people hear this, many people I know are, are already experienced mushroom hunters. They know what to look for. But for me, my fear is always I'm going to grab the wrong mushroom. So how, how do people educate themselves about what is a safe mushroom and what is not? What, what would you say, Duncan? Uh, I think a really good source to utilize are mushroom identification books. Um, you know, if you, wherever you live, you could get a mushroom identification book according to the region that you live in. Uh, the ones that I have are, you know, Pacific Northwest, Pacific, or specific. And uh, yeah, I like books uh, online. You know, there's a lot of information online on YouTube, specifically on people identifying mushrooms in the woods. Um, those are good resources as well. And Mycological Society. Mycological yes. Society. Your local Mycological Society. So, uh, so if you see the term Mycological Society, that is a group of people specifically devoted you know, again, I'm trying trying to educate them. Totally naive people. <laughs> Mycological means mushroom folks. Yes, it doesn't yep. mean they're studying microphones. <laughs> um, so, um, so so let's let's kind of walk through what would be a typical foraging for mushrooms because I do oh. see that posted often. Um, I think Seabrook does a mushroom foraging a couple of times, and obviously, if somebody says, "Hey, I want to go out on a mushroom forage with knowledgeable people," what would that be like for them? Uh, well, what we do is we'll gather um, people together. Uh, we'll explain uh, the forest that they're in. A lot of the mushrooms are associated with